Welcome to our reflection on the readings for the Holy Mass of the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year A. Uh, in order to understand the liturgy of today, we have to take in mind the following principle, that the victory of good on the face of the earth will always be conditioned to the acceptance of those good people, in the, the, uh, of the good people uh, that they accept the word of the prophet of God. Uh, remember what is, there's a marvelous phrase of St. Paul, I believe it's in the letter to the Romans, where he says, God makes everything occur to favor those who love him. In other words, events take place, things happen for God, because he is directing them in favor of those who love him. And that's very important, because the important thing is that he has many people, plenty of people who love him on the face of the earth, so then he can direct things the way he wants. The true Catholic, to be faithful and to persevere, can never to try to find a conciliation between what the prophet says and what the world says. In effect, as can be seen in the first reading, see Jeremiah 20, verses 7 to 9, the life of the prophet and of those who try to follow him will always be a stone of scandal for the spirit of the world. Therefore, those who, tr who try to live as the world lives betray the prophet of God. In our times, it, can, uh, it cannot be said that there, are, that there are no more prophets of God. It cannot be said that they, that they have ceased to exist. No. Uh, it's not that, they, that there are few that exist, but what exists, what are few, is those souls that are ready to break and to burn their own uh, criterions in order to follow the path of clash with the world, the flesh, and the devil. Here we can do a good examination of conscience. You see, it fits in here. How is my manner of thinking, of judging, and of acting? If they are according to the world, I must ask for graces of the Most Holy Virgin in order to have strength to tear away from my soul the worldly stains, because that is, the stains that are of Satan. If they are according to God, I have to ask providence the grace of perseverance because to those faithful God treats as sons, those who he treats as sons, that he does not cease to send them crosses, trials, and many sacrifices. When God and Mary most holy call us to be closer to them, we must not consider our wretchedness or wrong visualizations, but yes, uh, they desire that we have an attitude of detachment uh, regarding ourselves. In other words, that we not be attached to ourselves, but be deta detached to, our, to ourselves before the trials that they will send us. As we have to be, we have to be detached. We have to accept them as they come. See, this is the attitude of Saint Peter in the Gospel. See Matthew sixteen twenty one to twenty seven. The admonishment of our Lord Saint Peter was very severe, very severe. It's going so far to say to him, "Get behind me, Satan." Matthew 16, 23, eh, because the God-man knew that he would accept well that admonishment and that therefore that correction be an occasion for St. Peter to affirm even more his union with the Master. And it's, in, it's, it's really impressive because our Lord, if you read the, uh, the text of the, uh, the locutions there in Caesarea Philippi in that uh, Gospel of St. Matthew, you'll see that just before this occurs, this episode occurs when St. Peter takes him apart and says, Lord, don't talk about that, that you're going to suffer because like that. And he says, get behind me, Satan, because you think like the world thinks and you don't, yeah, that you're thinking like the world thinks, you see. He has just named him head of his church. He's just, our Lord has just named him the first pope. And right after that, he calls him a Satan. So you see that we have to be very flexible regarding graces. You see, you have to be ready to make changes and adjustments to fit in with what God and Our Lady wants us to do, you see. And this is a, a magnificent example of St. Peter, now, because our Lord said that to him, because he knew that he would accept it, that he would, that it would make him come closer to him, you see. Uh, when providence admonishes us, do we bend down, abandoning our attachment to our own erroneous criteria? When conscience lifts us up for a high, or for on high, uh, uh, do we accept with a good grace the example of St. Peter who accepted the admonishment of Christ? That's a question that could be asked, see. 
These and other questions can be made in the literature today, the literature today, which is very rich as all are. Uh, by all those who desire really be holy and spotless Catholics in the 21st century. Therefore, let us have the following certainty. The Holy Church will be led to its full glorification on this earth to the degree in which his sons be irreprehensible and vigilant against the world and against those who try to leave, lead, excuse me, lead the flock of Christ to a connubium, a marriage, a union with the spirit of the world and of Satan. So I think that that is, this is a magnificent liturgy of today, and I hope that you will all receive many graces in considering it. And uh, now we give you our final blessing with the desire that you, Our Lady, keep you all very, very close to her immaculate heart and grant you all the graces that you need to fully accept what uh, Our Lord and Our Lady wants you to do. May Almighty God bless you through the intercession of the Most Blessed Mother, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Salve Maria.